It's part 14 of our interview series on the Little River Band, with three of the main inspirations in this group in the beginning, and throughout the most successful period of the band's career, Graham Goble, B. Bertels, Glenn Shorick. In this one, we talk about, well, a controversial figure in the band, because a lot of folks think the Little River Band is no longer really the Little River Band. The only remaining member from some semblance of when they were big is Wayne Nelson. He did sing one big hit for them, Night Owls. And Wayne sings that one, right, if I remember correctly? Yeah, yeah he yeah. sings an unbelievably great. I, I wrote it for Wayne's voice. Really? The thing that got Wayne in the band was his voice. I mean, he was a, he was an, a, a good bass player as well, but I'm always about the vocal, and I'm always looking for voices. Now, when I wrote, um, I never saw the movie, but I saw the trailer for Saturday Night Fever with John Travolta there. Now, the Night Owls, you're talking for someone here that couldn't be further from a Night Owl if you tried. Uh, I've never been to a club. I never go to those sorts of things. I never, I couldn't be further from the character of John Travolta in, not in Saturday Night Fever if I tried. But I could imagine what that would be like. And that's and then when I had Wayne's voice in my head, I wrote it for him to sing, and and that's how that that turned out. How did he get into the band? How what, what was uh, conspired? Well, well, um, the Jim Messina band, um, which Wayne Nelson was playing in, uh, supported us when we were playing in America or Canada. I can't remember, and uh, I immediately um, we didn't have a bass player at that point. George McArdle had left. And we were playing with someone else, I think. And so I just um, basically offered Wayne the gig after seeing him play in the Messina band. Yeah. What happened with the parting with Farnham? Um, well, n nothing. I, I, I remember the last words John ever said to me. Uh, we finished recording the No Rains album, which we all thoroughly enjoyed, because that was the last album on the um, Capital 8 album deal. And I think we did maybe one show in Melbourne, one or two, might have been one show. And then John uh, at, at that time was already uh, doing his demos and recording, trying to get Whispering Jack because that wasn't a late hours there either. I mean, he wasn't really a hot item. I mean, it was just, he was still John Farnham, the cabaret artist we used to know at some level. And so um, he was doing the uh, Whispering, Whispering Jack recordings uh, and half of LAB were on that anyway. I mean, David Hirschfelder was, was doing that. He was on there and, um, well, not half of them, but, but some of them, David Hirschfelder was a big part. David Hirschfelder was a big part of Whispering Jack. And so John certainly didn't know, well, uh, all he knew was that there was no uh, palette at Capitol Records for Little River Band. Um, and he, I think, wrongly thought because of him. And I don't think that was the case. It wasn't the fact that they wanted Glenn's voice because when we got Glenn back two years later, it still didn't work. It wasn't anything to do with not having Shorrock. Everyone thought, well, you've changed your lead singer. We don't want to know anymore. It was just that the the hierarchy and the personnel changed at Capital and the the, pe the Capital people that made LRB a big success in America had left. And there was a new kid on the block and he wanted his acts to be there and he wouldn't spend the money on the Ruben. So John thought, well, it's all me and the songs aren't any good. He got it completely wrong. That was not the case. We had everything. We had the songs. We had the whole lot. So the last gig we did, we finished No Rains. And the last thing John said to me, he put his arms around me and he said to me, I love you, mate. I hope this will work. I hope, hope, hope we can get this working. And that was the last time I ever spoke to him. That's that. And then he went off and did Whispering Jack where the album didn't even get any support from Capital. It never, uh, the single never went anywhere. There was nothing support. There was no tour on offer. There was nothing for us to do other than break up. And so Farnham went on and did Whispering Jack and became a legend and still is. Um, but I value those five years with John as much as I valued all the years I had with Glenn and Beeb and everyone. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Take care of yourself.